Hello, welcome to class 12 business studies chapter 9 financial management explanation part 2 and in this explanations we will be discussing on the following contents they are role or importance of financial management and its objectives now let us go in detail role or importance of financial management means all the financial statements or financial activities are directly or indirectly influenced by financial management decisions so since it has a direct bearing on the financial health of a business the financial statement such as balance sheet profit and loss account reflects a firm's financial positions and its financial health so some prominent examples which are affected by financial management decisions are as follows okay so let me tell you why uh, financial plays a very important role is if we have sufficient if you have a money then you can utilize that money in a very effective or efficient manner so the money should be utilized in such a way that it is not wasted so we should always use the finance uh, sorry the uh, fund or the finance of the business in a very effective way that is if you want to run a business for a very longer period of time because every business depends upon its fund or a money so it is necessary for you all to earn profit if you want to survive in the business so that is why money plays a very important role if you don't have business uh, sorry if you don't have money means if you <coughs> sorry if you don't have finance means there is no business so if you want to do a business then you need to utilize or manage the finance in a very effective way so now let's start with some of the examples the first one says size and compositions of fixed assets means size and compositions of fixed assets is directly dependent on investment decisions in which company decides like how much capital it is planning to invest in a fixed assets so there should be a proper planning in how like in making a plan like how much you want to invest in the company so all these things should be done in a very planned manner and the second is the quantum of current assets and its break up into cash inventory and receivables means the amount of current assets and its division in cash bills receivable inventories etc depend on the financial management decisions like for example if it is decided to increase fixed assets or investment decisions then it increases the requirement of the working capital sometimes uh, money is not fixed every day in a day to day life we have to spend some amount like uh, while paying bills money it does not stays in our hand it just uh, like it um, we we need to utilize that money because we do it every single day like paying off bills giving salaries giving wages so that is why excuse me so because of that when there is increase in the investment in the fixed assets so there is uh, so there is a, uh, a rise or increase in the working capital requirements also so that is how it is uh, that uh, that is why the current assets are influenced by the financial management decisions third point is the amount of long term and short term funds to be used so <coughs> excuse me in financial management decisions it is also decided how much amount is to be raised 
through long term as well as short term finance see okay in a, if an organization if they want to remain liquid then it should raise funds through long term but it will decrease its profitability because we have to pay more of interest on long term debts as compared to short term debts because if we uh, like uh, like if we use the amount in a short term then obviously we will be able to pay uh, we will be uh, facing a lesser risk and less cost we will be uh, like we will be like bearing it so so if you want to uh, like uh, use the uh, money according to the long term fund means there is a uh, more chances of uh, more of interest and obviously it will be kind of difficult for us to earn more profit in it that is if you want to keep the money idle so it's better so it's up to the businessman how to utilize the money whether they want to use it in a long term or a short term uh, like amount and the fourth is break up of long term financing into debt equity etc or fixing debt equity ratio in capital so in financing decisions it is decided that how much capital is to be raised through debt equity share capital preference share capital etc so that the financial management helps in deciding debt equity ratio <clears throat> so that is why while utilizing the finance we should be very precise and we should always keep our mind alert and should always plan according to its direction and we should always make use of the money and manage it in a very efficient manner and the fifth is all items in the profit and loss account so all the items in the profit and loss account are affected by the decisions obviously you know it very well of financial management like for example if we raise capital through debt then we have to pay higher interest so there is more of expenses so that will affect the profit and loss account okay i am sure you are clear about it if you face any difficulties and you can ask me personally clear let's now understand what are the objectives of financial management see there are two objectives that is the primary objective and the secondary objective now remember the primary objective of financial management is to maximize the wealth of the shareholders that is wealth maximization concept see here ultimately the companies have raised money from the shareholders okay so the company should have the goal of ensuring that the wealth is maximized okay that if the company keeps on performing on a consistent manner in a profitable manner then what will happen the share price of the company would keep on increasing if you want you can do one thing you can go and check when the sensex was 1000 what was the share price of let's say a company like reliance and what is the share price of reliance as of today so you will understand how the share price has moved when uh, 20 years back when the company was still growing and 20, after 20 years when the company has established a position in the market and it is expanding like anything okay it is one of the most important companies of the world so remember always the business should focus on maximizing the shareholders wealth and that is the primary objective of any business this is so because the funds which the company has they belong to shareholder and the manner in which they are invested tomorrow if i take the money from shareholders and do not make wise decisions then the money will get removed that is the money would i would earn losses instead of profits okay because of that shareholders would not be interested in giving me money and they might remove the money which they have invested so that is the reason the returns have to be earned by and the returns which are earned by them are determined by the market value or price of the share so you need to ensure that the money which you are getting from shareholders is invested wisely and 
you're doing good and this could be depicted through the movement in the share price of your company now market price of equity share obviously will increase if the benefit from a decision exceeds the cost involved let's say the company issued new shares okay so people invested in that shareholders came in after some time the money was invested for some particular project and the company made profits so here what happened the decision involved exceeded the profits what were made exceeded the cost which was involved so what happened here the market price of this equity share will jump right all the financial decisions whatever are made in the firm they should aim at ensuring that each decision is efficient and add some value to the company it should not happen that the financial decisions which you are making in the company they deplete the capital or deplete the profits of the company they should always keep on adding to the profits of the company or add some kind of value to the company okay this will help in increasing the market price of the shares now let's understand the second three objectives what are those see the other thing is profit maximization or effective utilization of funds whatever funds you are getting from the market you need to ensure that you are doing a effective utilization of those funds otherwise it would result in higher cost compared to the gains which you have incurred now the availability of funds should be at reasonable cost it shouldn't happen that i'm taking a loan the loan is available but then the market interest rate is 14% which is charged to a customer now because of some reason i am being charged at 25% then it's not a reasonable cost i am paying for the funds procured okay maintaining adequate liquidity you shouldn't as i gave you an example you shouldn't have be in a position wherein you don't have funds and there is a customer coming in and you can't even go and purchase raw material okay so you need to always maintain that liquidity in your business you should ensure safety of funds that is the funds are not lost in the sense that the you do not lose the funds by going in for wrong decisions or by trading in something which is harmful to the business okay you should avoid idle finance which we already discuss wherein whenever you have any finance which you know is available for some time wherein you can earn money then you can invest in certain financial instrument which will give you interest or which will make you earn money on the money which you have invested for a shorter period of time 